heard me talk a lot about my work with Engineers Without Borders on small scale projects, but as promised, I'm talking about a new project that I worked on this past summer. <laughs> um, deliver infrastructure with the World Food Program, and this was a really different experience because I worked with a huge organization. Okay, so the World Food Program is the world's largest organization that um, serves, that fights hunger. Um, their main purpose is to deliver food in emergencies, so like floods, earthquakes. Um, like I mentioned, there are 14,000 employees. Um, they serve, so it's basically like a giant corporation. They serve 100 million people a year um, all over the world. It's really a massive scale operation. And it's a UN agency. So this is the food delivery and also logistics arm of the UN. Okay, so within this huge organization, I worked at the headquarters in Rome um, to with the field engineering team, which is the team that oversees and plans all the construction projects and works with the maintenance of all the infrastructure that the World Food Program creates. Um, so this team of six people um, is responsible for over 100 projects, and it's a really important part of the World Food Program's mission um, that's very like, understaffed. So like, you would think, oh, like, what does infrastructure have to do with food? Um, so lack of infrastructure creates lack of access to markets, um, which during droughts and famines increases people's risks of food shock. So your the prices of food dramatically increase if you don't have access to markets. It also, in, from a humanitarian perspective, increases your response time if instead of driving on a nice road, you have to drive through a river. Um, and also changes the quality and quantity of food. Like in a lot of regions, if there is no way for the World Food Program to get there, they can't deliver like more nutritious food, such as fruits and protein. They can only basically deliver grains, which they do through airdrops. Okay, so the main projects that I worked on were um, to create a series of design templates for the team. And so these are for very standardized features, like um, all UN buildings require like protective walls and security gates and sort of like very simple things like that. And I created AutoCAD files and standardized designs that for any new building, the team could quickly use this design and adapt it. Um, I also and I also um, helped design a website. So, like I mentioned, there are hundreds of projects and offices all over the world constantly report like, oh, we need a new warehouse. We have this damage component of this was designing a building survey. So basically when I started, when a new project was proposed, one of our team members had to go to the site and like assess the property and see like, oh, is this a feasible property? Could this work? Um, so the building survey that I designed was basically a layman's instructions to this is how you do a building survey. This is what we would want to know. Um, like this, take a picture of this. It was very simple and easy to understand. Um, and then I also helped with some of the construction projects that were ongoing. So in some of the like design aspects that I worked on were designing runways for planes to land and deliver food in Ethiopia and Mauritania. I also worked on the design elements of warehouses in Ghana and Cambodia. Um, and so to do these things, I worked a lot in AutoCAD, um, and I had to learn I know the American codes, but I had to like kind of also adapt for the European codes because I was like working um, in Europe. Yeah, and then I think even more challenging than like the design process was actually the project planning process. So um, one thing that I was involved in that was really challenging was South Sudan is in a huge crisis. They're a new country, so basically we have or the World Food Program in the UN has all these offices and all these competing projects going on. So I was actually like in a meet, well, in like a phone interview with like a lot of different people from the different offices, and we were working on prioritizing like what is the most important thing that has to be done right away. So this was actually ended up being like roads, and then like more infrastructure for like water delivery to camps. So we created basically a timeline and a system so that instead of having a million projects happening in many different sectors of the UN, we could coordinate better. Um, and then and another like project planning aspect was a road project in Zimbabwe. And with that, instead of like just taking input from people, I actually was able to use um, what I've learned in my transportation classes and using Google Earth, I could map the like road linkages that we proposed and have I had data on the 
on the villages and what populations they had. So I was able to compute like what roads would serve the most people. Um, and then with the Ghana warehouse, I was actually in charge of what's called the tender process, which is basically like we have this design where like we want this built, and then we send it out to contractors in Ghana and say this is like can you do this? And you have to like review people and accept bids and work with like how are we going to get them you know water and materials and costs. So it was interesting because I got to work with talk to a lot of contractors and a lot with the Ghana office. Um, and because like the UN does not use Dropbox, I had to actually like make CDs and send them to Ghana. <laughs> that was fun process. <laughs> and then I also got to coordinate with like the delivery and the installation of blast-proof windows in Pakistan. I learned a lot about like designing buildings that will not blow up, which is very different from what I we normally do at MIT. It's something we don't think about, but in the UN building system, it's really important. Um, and then I also got to see some of the legal side. Um, we had like. It's really easy to get sued in civil engineering, which is something they don't really tell you at MIT, but it's now, and especially 